If you've ever had a morning where you swear you're never drinking again, or maybe you're just making a resolution to lay off the sauce for a while, what happens to your body when you stop drinking alcohol? We've invited a team of specialists to give us the skinny on what happens when we do a last call for alcohol. So first, what happens to your body when you have a few drinks? Let's take it from the top. So, for the brain, short term, it causes relaxation, it can help you loosen up, give you a little bit of extra courage, and the moderate to heavy use, it can actually cause you to have changes in your motor skills, your judgment, uh, impairing your ability to drive, for instance, which are not so good. With heavy long-term use, it can actually cause brain damage, uh, where people lose their ability to speak fluently. With excessive alcohol use, it can be quite, quite dangerous. You can drink so much alcohol that you black out or have no memories of anything that's happening around you. You can drink so much alcohol that someone can become completely anesthetized, unresponsive, and you could literally perform surgery on these patients. That's something that's extremely, extremely dangerous for people to get into. Going further down in your GI tract, let's start with reflux. Now, this is your esophagus. This is your lower esophageal sphincter. And your lower esophageal sphincter is a muscle that helps you keep things in your stomach. If your lower esophageal sphincter is loose, gastric contents can come up very easily and cause you to have heartburn or reflux. And that's a very, very common side effect in people who drink even once in a while. Staying in the GI tract, you have alcohol's effect on the liver. Short term, it can cause your liver enzymes to be elevated. And with long term alcohol use, alcohol can cause fibrosis and scarring the liver. Alcohol also has an effect on your heart. Short term, it can cause high blood pressure. With excessive use of alcohol, it can actually cause heart failure and something called cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle that makes it harder for your heart to pump blood to the rest of the body. Alcohol can also affect your pancreas. Your pancreas can become inflamed with alcohol, something called pancreatitis, which can be life-threatening and require hospitalization. It can also cause atrophy of the pancreas long-term, which just doesn't work anymore. Alcohol can also have an effect on your kidneys, which may cause more trips to the bathroom. Normally, there's a hormone that works hand-in-hand -hand with the kidneys to help regulate the amount of water in your body. But drinking alcohol can actually disrupt this process, which may result in going to the bathroom way more than usual. And in some cases, this can lead to feeling dehydrated the morning after, too. So if you're prone to having headaches, you've maybe had a drink too many, and you want to stave off that hangover feeling, that headache that you always get in the morning time, one suggestion that I would make is one or two glasses of water before you go to bed. Try to really stay hydrated. You might have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, but in the morning time, I think you'll find that you'll have headaches a little less often, a little less severe, and just feel generally a little less blah. Alcohol can also have a profound effect on your sleep. Short term, alcohol is a sedative. It'll make you lethargic, so when you hit your head on the pillow, you'll fall asleep a little bit faster. However, when alcohol wears off in just a few hours, you actually get a rebound hypervigilance. Most people who drink to fall asleep will find that they have to wake up at three or four o'clock in the morning because the alcohol effect has worn off and their brains are actually more hypervigilant than they used to be before the alcohol. Gotcha. Now, what about more physically noticeable changes that happen when drinking alcohol consistently? What's going on if you're beginning to see a beer belly start to take shape? Beer bellies don't happen from beer alone. What's important to keep in mind is that all alcohol has calories. One serving of alcohol gives you about 100 calories per serving. And we didn't even mention the mixers you add into those alcoholic drinks because those would boost up the calories as well. And if you like those frozen mixed drinks like margaritas and pina coladas, they can run you upward of 500 to 900 calories. A 12 ounce serving of beer can run you anywhere from 95 to 110 calories per serving. And if you like those IPAs, those are about 200 calories per serving. If you're a wine drinker, a five ounce serving can be anywhere from 110 to 125 calories. So the takeaway is all alcohol has calories that are going to add up. Got it. But why do I also start to crave carb or calorie heavy foods when I've had a few drinks? What happens in your body is that alcohol promotes an increase in the neurochemical 
galanine. Galanine boosts your need for fatty foods. And if you're drinking at night, you can wake up with high galanine levels and still eat lots of fatty foods. It also affects your blood sugar. It impairs the liver's ability to release stored glucose, which stabilizes blood sugar levels. That's gonna have you hounding for lots of sugar and carbs. Okay, so if it's time to cut back, go on a sober break for a month, or quit drinking alcohol for good, what happens to your body when you stop drinking alcohol? If you're an occasional social drinker, you're probably not gonna notice much from not drinking alcohol. However, if you're a moderate to heavy alcohol drinker, especially if you drink on a regular basis, the withdrawal symptoms can be quite noticeable. You can become irritable, you can become listless, you can have terrible headaches, you can have nausea. And those are all signs of alcohol withdrawal that will typically last a few days. Now, in someone who drinks a unhealthy, excessive amount of alcohol, the withdrawal can be quite dangerous and significant. Uh, people can develop tremors, they can develop delirium, they can develop confusion, and a vast variety of other physiologic changes that often need to be, uh, to be monitored by a physician or a healthcare professional. Got it. But how will going cold turkey affect my weekly diet? If you're used to drinking two glasses of wine per day and you cut that out, you reduce your daily intake by 200 calories per day. Over a week, you've reduced a total of 1,000 calories, which can make a substantial difference if you cut that wine habit. And if you're a beer drinker, cutting out one or two of those is going to reduce your daily calories by 200 to 400 per day. That alone can be up to 20% of your daily caloric intake. Plus the added benefit of cutting down your alcohol is that you wake up more energized, which makes you more motivated to tackle the day. Big morning, energy is great, but we all know quitting or cutting back on alcohol can be tough. So here are a few things to help you cut back on your alcohol consumption. Like everyone else, I enjoy a good drink once in a while, but the key here is moderation. What your mom told you about not doing anything too much is absolutely the right thing to do. The first very simple thing to do is to keep a diary of how much you drink and how often you drink. Looking at your alcohol intake history, objectively, with something that's written on pen and paper, can be very, very, very helpful to give you a visual aid in terms of how much you're drinking and how you can cut back. Another tip I give my patients is nursing the glass that they have. We drink it to be with our friends and family. It helps disinhibit us, helps us relax. You shouldn't be drinking the alcohol to get that buzz, to get to that point where you're stuporous. Nurse it, take it slow. Another way you can minimize how much alcohol you consume is actually measuring how much alcohol you're putting into your drinks. You can use a jigger to figure out exactly and precisely how much alcohol you're putting in a drink. Not only will that help you better quantify how much alcohol you're using, but it'll probably make your drinks taste a lot better. Another fun pro tip you could try is a little bit of a meditation. So instead of taking 10 to 15 minutes to sip alcohol, focus on your breath. And if anything, you'll wake up clear-headed in the morning and ready to take on the day alcohol-free. And remember, whether you're looking to quit for good, one week, or one month, what's important to keep in mind is to take it one day at a time.